Thank you. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Good. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, as you'll probably be able to tell after I get going, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than talking about freedom and liberty and restoring our indigenous power. And uh, I know that this group is, uh, is not the typical group that I'm going to be talking to, that I have talked to with this presentation. You guys know all, there's probably nothing new in here that you don't already know. But what I think it's valuable for you to see is kind of, I guess people tell me I have a way of saying things that in such a way that people can understand in an inspiring, simple way, understand the principles of freedom and liberty. And maybe you'll learn something about how you can explain these principles to other people that you hadn't thought of before. Uh, and, and, and inspire them to get started. Um, <clears throat> where we really got, where people in the Republic down in Florida had read my book, Common Sense Revisited, and got really excited because they felt like I wrote it for the Republic because it's all about restoring our indigenous power and bottom-up government. And that's what a Republic is. A Republic is bottom-up government. And that's what I write about in Common Sense Revisited and I inspire people by telling them how we can solve literally every problem that we have in this society could be solved if we return to the principles of bottom-up government in a republic. So um, your feedback would be appreciated. If anybody wants to use this PowerPoint presentation themselves and give it to their friends and their communities, that's why I wrote it. I actually wrote it and I have notes in the PowerPoint presentation that tell people how you know, give people ideas and feedback and background information so that they can give this presentation. Uh, my idea is to duplicate myself by having everyone being able to do this presentation all over the country because if we're going to take back our country and we're going to take back our indigenous power, it's not going to be because we get money from somewhere uh, outside of this country or outside of ourselves. It's not going to be because uh, all of a sudden the military decides to support us and not the de facto government. It's not going to be for any of those reasons. It's going to be because we've built the republic in our local community. We've started the grand juries. We've gotten enough people to, uh, to sign on to the republic uh, and be part of it. And we're actually doing it from the bottom up. That's what's going to make it work. And I know you guys understand that. So anyway, let me get started. Uh, what we'll be doing tonight is we'll be talking about uh, origin and design of government, indigenous power versus surrogate power, bottom-up versus top-down government, and how we can return to what our founders called the laws of nature and of nature's God, and how the Republic of the United States can, or the restored Republic of the United States can be hopefully our structure for restoring our indigenous power. Uh, this is a copy of Common Sense Revisited. Anybody that comes to one of my presentations gets the copy for free. I've bought, also bought extra copies for everybody if you want to, uh, at a very, very reduced, basically at my cost for producing them, uh, to take back to your uh, community if you want. I have several hundred copies with me that you can purchase if you want. Um, so first, first we're going to talk about government versus individual sovereignty um, in terms of Thomas Paine and common sense. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Common sense. How many of you have read Thomas Paine's Common Sense? Okay. I, I highly recommend that you go back and read that because it was a foundational document. And what I mean by that is it simply, in common sense terms, explained to the people in the colonies the difference between individual sovereignty and government sovereignty, or what in those days was called the divine right of kings. And what he did is he made it so clear to the people that it was absurd to think that some person who had, by the accident of birth, born into a royal family, would be your master and you would be his slave. And he explained that in, in terms that were so powerful and so simple and so clear that it created, created a paradigm shift in our country. It was absolutely crucial. Let me tell you the story. January of 1776. 
militias had sent their people from around the colonies to Boston to support George Washington in his fight against the British. They were fighting against the British, but there was no Declaration of Independence. The Continental Congress was sitting on their hands. They, didn't, they weren't ready to sign it. In fact, in January, Adams and Franklin and Jefferson took a poll and because they didn't want to have an official vote because they knew they'd lose, and it was 75%, somewhere around that, against signing a Declaration of Independence and for getting back with England, even though we were already fighting. So what happened between January of 1776 and July of 1776 to switch that support for independence so strongly towards independence that those those Continental Congress members were signed a unanimous Declaration of Independence by July. Well, what happened is Thomas Paine, and uh, this came out at this time, and uh, this is a letter from George Washington. And he wrote that in, in April of 1776, just a few months after it was first uh, released. By the way, the first 50,000 copies were sold out in a few days. The next 50,000 copies were sold out in a few days. Within a few months, over 500,000 copies were in print in a country of less than 3 million people. That's amazing. And most historians believe that almost everybody read it in the colonies or had it read to them if they couldn't read. So it said, by, this was a letter from Washington. By private letters which I lately received from Virginia, I find common sense is working a powerful change there in the minds of many men. So the founders, Washington even, understood what was happening there. So it really did light a fire and created a paradigm shift. Now, over 500,000 copies sold. What did it talk about? It talked about indigenous power versus surrogate power, in, in t Payne's term, uh, individual sovereignty versus government sovereignty, or the birthright of kings. Uh, and all of these things were put in language that people could understand, because it was all about laws of our being or laws of nature, God's law, whatever you want to talk. Everything was in terms of that. And this is my favorite quote of all by Jefferson. The principles on which we engaged, of which the charter of our independence is the record, were sanctioned by the laws of our being. And we but obeyed them in pursuing undeviatingly the course they called for. So the nature of power, understanding this, understanding indigenous power versus surrogate power is the key. What is indigenous power? Well, indigenous power is a power that we have, we're given by our creator. We have free will. We have the ability to create in the image of our creator. We're the only beings that have that ability. So we have that power. That power is indigenous to us. We're created with it from our creator. There is no other entity in society that has indigenous power. Any other entity in society is an entity that we create. We individuals who have the indigenous power create. And what we do is we assign some power to that entity, whether it's a limited partnership or a corporation or a government. It's what we create. And then they have to follow the rules that we give them. They have a limited partnership agreement or a corporate charter or they have a constitution. And it's supposed to limit their power because these surrogates always tend, because they're made up of people who want to expand their territory of influence, naturally, they always tend to get out of control unless they're watched, unless they're kept to the limits of their charter or their corporate, corporate charter or their whatever, their constitution. So, but they are surrogates. They do not have indigenous power. They are surrogates. And what, what happens is, is when these surrogates start to think where people within the surrogate starts to think that they have indigenous power, they will use deceit, they will use uh, all kinds of deception, they will use fraud to make you think that they have the power. And that is what we have today. A surrogate that is out of control, a surrogate government that literally most of the people on this planet think that they, have, they don't have the power and that the government does have the power. Well, that's not the case. And our founders understood this. They understood it very, very clearly. And this is the key to understanding all relationships between individuals and our institutions. All 
humans have free will. We all have the capacity to grow and evolve. We have the power to create our own reality. We are creators created in the image of our creator. Now the founders saw all this as self-evident. This truth is self-evident. Common sense concludes that any rational thinking being is unique because they have free will and the ability to manifest thoughts into concrete forms through actions. It's the only true source of, po source of power because it, it originates within and the delegated source is surrogate power. 